So the SIU has updated Parliament, uh, specifically the Standing Committee on Public Accounts, uh, that was earlier today, about these PPE procurement contracts as well as the Digital Vibes probe. To discuss, uh, we're now joined by the Chair of SCOPA, uh, that Standing Committee, Mkuleko Hlengwa. Mr Hlengwa, thank you for being with us. It seems like the evidence uh, against the former health minister uh, just keeps stacking up and this is no longer about possible um, negligence, uh, the, the SIU talking about possible blatant criminality. Just firstly, on a personal level, are you disappointed? Well, of course, it is regrettable that the former minister finds himself involved in such a saga when we had all really looked to him to the champion of uh, you know the fight against COVID-19 and therefore it is disappointing but we do note the fact that he reserves his right and um, to actually um, have the report reviewed but be that as it may we are quite adamant that the SIU must press ahead with this matter as it is doing with all other matters because we fundamentally believe that if there are no consequences um, to corruption or any other form of maladministration, we then set a precedent where this is okay, mm-hmm. and whereas it's not. The tragedy, of course, here is that it costs money to actually recover money and to investigate. And we are looking at about 351 million rand now to investigate um, all this PPE corruption. And so those are the risks uh, which come with what um, these criminal mm-hmm. elements are actually doing within the state uh, machinery. But all in all, we are quite satisfied so far with the work that the SIU has done regarding digital vibes and the other investigations yeah. so far. So 351 million rand uh, sounds like an incredible amount. I guess the idea is that you start getting money uh, back in from, from people who shouldn't have got contracts in, in the first place. Uh, but, but are you confident uh, that, that we'll see a figure bigger than that? Um, well, we are quite confident that the SIU is working towards the recovery of money. I mean, if you're looking at this digital vibes uh, saga, already 11.5 million rands has already been paid back. You look at the acknowledgement of debt, um, which they have signed across the country. Um, there is progress in that regard. And the fact that the special tribunal has been working, doubling its efforts to um, process and deal with these matters. And so... Uh, whilst it's regrettable that we have to spend 351 million rand at the same time, uh, it is, in our view, money well spent uh, because of the recoveries which we foresee. We would not want, to, of course, to speculate at this point. The final report of the SAU will come out on the 30th of November um, to the President, and I'm sure then at Parliament yeah. will receive it a week or two after that. Well, the thing is now, do you believe that justice will be served after speaking to the SIU? Are you confident uh, that there is enough evidence here uh, to, to go to court to, to secure successful uh, convictions? Because after the, the spate of uh, tender fraud that we've seen for years, many South Africans are, are waiting for firm instances of justice, I guess. Yeah, we, we, we are quite uh, um, confident that the SIE is making progress, but also at the same time, what they have done, with, it, it, it gives us further confidence, is the fact that there is heightened um, cooperation between the SIU, the NPA, and other law enforcement agencies. And so the issue of investigation and preparing for prosecution is not an isolated uh, operation. It is something that previously we have discussed and we have resolved, and the House has agreed with us on this, on the resuscitation of the anti-corruption task team, because the pooling and sharing of resources resources and the fight against corruption is of utmost importance. And so um, the work that has been done by the SIU um, is work that they are not doing alone. However, we do want to impress on the NPA to ensure that preparations for trials is done in a manner which will do justice to the investigation, given the amount of money that has been spent. But yeah. nothing so far gives us any reason to believe 
that um, the law enforcement agencies in the area of PPE investigations will not be able to serve justice for the country. Well, then finally, what is Parliament's role here? Well, we are facilitating uh, the work and at the same time ensuring that the work is being done. There are issues that we need to take up in so far as oversight is concerned. Amongst others, there are a number of disciplinary processes across the um, government spectrum, particularly in government departments and municipalities that have not moved, which are really not in the purview um, of the NPA, and we need to make sure that that happens. Also, at the same time, is to ensure that we engage in discussions with um, the other relevant portfolio committees to ensure that the resources needed for this fight are made available. And so that is a discussion um, we will be having with Parliament. And the final point um, for us here is to ensure that there's transparency also in the investigating processes and ensuring that the public of South Africa is kept abreast of the work that has been done. Because for the longest of time, um, there has been a disconnect between what is happening in the investigative space and the South African public who are actually quite concerned um, about this. And so um, we believe that um, the work that we are doing at this point and also referring matters to the um, law enforcement agencies is work that um, Parliament um, has to do and we continue to do that. And of course, we will be processing the annual reports of all the government departments and entities and making and taking resolutions um, on that as they will be coming in. And the report of the committee to the House should be ready by the end of September, which will have recommendations about how these things must be corrected. Because concern to us, of course, is also the safety of the whistleblowers, as the SIU also um, ventilated today. And so we do need to have a discussion um, as Parliament about how we strengthen um, the, the mechanisms in place through resources and otherwise of those whistleblowers. Otherwise, if we don't do that, um, whistleblowers will not be keen to come forward. And what we have seen over the past few weeks is absolutely tragic, and it is something that we need to work um, very hard to avoid and to prevent, because prevention is ultimately mm. better than cure. Yeah, I'm sure you're referring to there uh, even the death of a whistleblower. Thank you very much yeah, for that update. I'm Kaleko Ahlengwa, the chairperson of SCOPA, the Standing Committee on Public Accounts.